NRL fantasy round 12 team list analysis. Team lists are in and yeah, there's, uh, there's some big changes here. Some big changes. Look, teams like the Chooks are, are dealing with a lot of injuries. Some other teams are going from strength to strength. We're going to have a look at it for NRL fantasy. Before we start things off, though, I want you to drop a comment below letting me know who you're going to be captaining this week. So are you on Nathan Cleary against the Broncos? Are you on Nico Hines? Are you looking at Payne Haas? Maybe Dave Fafita? Where are you going with that captain option? Let's jump right into this, though. So Broncos v. Panthers. And look, in real life, there are some challenges for the Broncos in this game. So first thing you're going to note here is that there's no Adam Reynolds. Now, Adam Reynolds is down to about 660K. He had that concussion last week trying to score a try. He got that penalty try instead. Um, but at 660K with a high break even when he comes back, Adam Reynolds could be a guy that we're buying in a month's time because he's going to be around 600K when he bottoms out, which for a guy like Adam Reynolds who consistently averages between 49 and 52 every year, that's not bad at all. Rest of the Broncos' back line here, look, Reese Walsh, he's going up and down as you'd expect. He's very attacking stat reliant. You have Reese Walsh at this point, you're probably waiting for that origin team list. That's probably what you're sitting out and looking for. And if he plays Origin and you're an overall player, you might be moving him on. But there really aren't that many inspiring wing fullbacks who are pumping it right now. There are some cheaper ones we're going to go through, though. Um, in the forward pack for the Broncos, look, Payne Haas is still that guy. He's one of those guys I'd think about keeping through Origin. He's going to get rest, but his PGM has been a lot stronger this year. In games where he's at lower minutes, he's performed well. Uh, he's pretty expensive, but the Broncos aren't a gimme to be in that top spot. You know, the Adam Reynolds injury is going to present some challenges. I think he's kind of juicy to hold. Look, Paddy Carrigan's one that you'd sell, though. Uh, he seems to get rest, and they affect him a bit more than they do Payne Haas. On the bench, it's a tricky one to predict. I mean, there's obviously going to be some value in terms of middle forward scorers on this bench, but everyone's a bit priced up for my liking, so I'm not really enjoying too many of his options at Brisbane. Um, for the Panthers... Dylan Edwards is a guy that you could look at as a keeper after this round. So post round, post round 13, first major buy round, uh, Dylan Edwards could be very interesting. He's probably one of the top performing wing fullbacks right now. Uh, Brian Toe is going to play Origin, steer clear from that. Tyron Peachy is very try reliant and his role in the team is going to diminish soon. Uh, Jaram Luai, don't do it to yourself if you're looking at him. That score last week was result of a fantastic real world performance it's not going to happen every week don't get him to your fantasy side nathan cleary you can make a case for him being your captain here um without adam reynolds this is going to be a, a sort of high performing type of game for two top sides cleary might have to step up in this game and also you get your captain done first game which is kind of nice too um i'm personally leaning towards nico hines but yeah let me know if you're thinking about cleary or or Payne Haas or, or someone else I mean, there's a couple of really good options in this game in the forward pack, uh, you got Scott Sorensen in there. He had a great game last week. He's sort of starting to price up. For me, he's not that guy to be buying. Liam Martin's on that bench. They don't play the round 13 major buy round. You know, Hosking had that HIA um, and missed some minutes last week. I just don't think you want to be going against Scott Sorensen because at full strength, he goes back to that middle forward role where he's great. He plays about 50 minutes and his scoring is not as good. So don't be doing that to yourself. If you have Hosking, that's kind of interesting because is he a sell? Uh, for me, he might have done his job. I might be looking to sell if I had him. But you could also make a case that he might bounce back. I mean, it's up to you. If you really believe in the talent of Hosking, wait this week and watch this game and see what happens. But if you can make a move and get him out for someone like Madison, for example, that's where you might be making that move. Um, Isaiah Yo plays Origin. Steer clear there. Look, the, the hook rotation, Sonny Luke hasn't been always been promised to be. Um, he might be value in a few weeks' time, but yeah, I'd be steering clear right now. Next thing here is the Chooks and Dragons. And I want to start with the Chooks because this team list is insane for the Roosters. Like, let, let's go through it. You got no Joey Manu. So we get. I guess, you know, Sully E and Billy Smith have been in the centers the last couple of weeks. We get uh, Drew Hutchison into that seven role. It's a bit of an L for the Roots' attack, uh, a bit of an L for the out- – not an L for the outside backs, actually, because Drew will pass the ball a bit more. So maybe a plus for some of those outside backs. Looking at Tedesco, he scored his 15 last week, and that was that was rough. That was a rough experience for all of us who are in Tedesco. 
at this point at 550k with no wing fullbacks who are really performing and with injuries to other guys, I think Teddy's a hold. I think Joey Manu might be a sell. I'm waiting to hear the official information on the exact time frame. So I'm hearing maybe he'd be back around 14, so that'd be two weeks. At two weeks, he can probably cop it. He's that guy, um, especially with Sam Walker out for four weeks. If Sam Walker was coming into this team, I'd be thinking, oh, he probably keeps that spot. Because Sam Walker's injured, it means that Joey's probably going to get that sixth spot back. So for me, if it's zero to two weeks, we're holding Joey. If it's three weeks, we think about it. It's four weeks plus we sell. Um, Billy Smith next up here. So like I said this before, 36 average starting center. My view on him was I'm going to wait a week because I think Panthers will smash the Roosters. And I think we can wait and see. And I haven't seen him be that guy before. Now, Panthers smash the Roosters, but Billy Smith still produced 60 points, which <laughs> is, is tough when you don't know him. I mean, I held Alamotti, though, so he got me 50. It's it's not the worst thing in the world. But for Billy Smith, it's getting a bit late in the piece to be making that move. He's 431k now. You have to be believing that he's a bona fide keeper or a guy who's going to get to that keeper price of maybe 600k if you're buying him in. Right now, he's, he's doing that job, though. So 431k... Think of it like this is your last chance with Billy Smith. He's not playing around 13. He'd probably make you some money. If you need a center, I don't hate Billy Smith at all, but do it now or don't do it at all. Um, in the forward pack here, there's not too much to talk about here. I mean, the like Brandon Smith's still going. He's still sort of chugging along. He could be a guy move, but that middle and hooker eligibility is really nice. The edge back rowers are swapped over. So Egan Butcher and Tupanua come in. Um, both pretty good players, but... Nat Butcher, Angus Crichton out, which, yeah, uh, Gus Crichton, he was sort of shaping up like he might be a buy soon. Now he's back to the bench. It just sort of takes him off my radar a bit, Gus Crichton. If he's going to be moved to the bench, starting side, you know, back and forth consistently, he's probably not that guy you want to spend 600000 plus on. <sighs> Unless he gets some low-minute scores and really gets cheap, then he's worth the risk, but yeah. Dragon side of things, look, coach sacked, hook's gone. Um, hook gone could be really, really bad news for a lot of us who have some Dragons players. Um, I don't expect the back line to change too much from here. Zach Lomax comes back in. Lomax is a good player. Um, I think he should keep that spot. Ben Hunt goes to seven from hooker. I was kind of hoping for a super coach draft, actually, that Ben Hunt would become hooker and half eligible. But uh, no dice, I don't think, if he's going to start at seven again. Um, Jack DeBellin, he's been playing that 70-minute role. A new coach could mean the end of that. That could be at risk there. Jack Bird also, he's in that edge spot. He might go back to middle. There's talk that he could go back to center. Not a lot of loud talk, not a lot of reliable talk, but you know, with a new coach, you can never be sure. So just keep an eye on the Dragons. Uh, I'd be waiting a week to buy shares in any of these guys right now if I didn't have them. I mean, Jack DeBellin's priced up right now. Jack Bird's priced up right now. Give him a week, make him move later. Even Zachy Lomax, he needs to have a good game. So he'd be worth a look here, but he's kind of got a nice break even. So you don't look at that. On the bench, Jaden Sullivan, we said don't pull the trigger on him, and he scored three last week. I think he still made a bit of money on that three points, but he's back to the bench. So you, you never know what's going to happen there. Um, and then, yeah, if I still had Couchman or someone like that, Murdoch Masilla, I'd probably – Probably want to move them on. I mean, there's not going to be that many minutes opened up by Origin for this Dragons pack. So, yeah, get rid of them. Next up, we've got the Bunnies and the Eels. And as a Para fan, I'm a bit concerned about how we're going to defend here, which is good news if you're looking at Alex Johnston or someone like that, Tane Milne. We talked about both of them as buy options last week. Tane Milne posts like 60 points. Alex Johnston was quieter. Uh, I think both of those guys will score tries this week against Para. I just think our, our wing and defense hasn't been great. And, you know, guys like um, even Josh Mansell when he was at South before, I think he had four or five line breaks in the game against us last year. So, or maybe the year before that. But we leak on those edges. So if you want to make a move on like a Johnston or a Tane Milne, probably st still not too late. Tane Milne has that dual eligibility. Um, Latrell Mitchell, he's playing good again. <laughs> he had a good game last week. Origin coming up though. So, yeah, keep an eye on that. Um, not really touching the halves. Tavita Tola. He scored 44 last week. He's at a nice price, 445K. I'd be buying Totola with everything I had right now, basically. Like, you've got Tony Burgess out of the team right now as well. Cam Murray misses game through to Origin. Yeah, it's it, it's a good time. Even Jair might miss time to Origin as well. So Totola's a very good buy right now. 
Um, Damien Cook, wait a week if you don't have him now. See what the team list looks like for the Blues. He's probably in the Blues team, in my eyes. Do not buy Host. Do not buy Cheekam. Um, Host's been going well, though, so if you hold him, good job. Cam Murray is kind of spicy. I mean, you can wait a couple of weeks, and if you're a head-to-head -head player, you can maybe pull the trigger on him at 680K because that's the cheapest you're going to get Cam Murray. Like, he's a guy who gets to 900K most seasons. Um, yeah, I mean, he's passing the ball a bit more this year. Not running as much, so that's probably the risk there. On the Paris side of things, it's not a bad team list. I, I mean, we have one big change there. Hayes Dunst is out. Uh, Sean Russell comes in. That's a good real-world change for Parramatta. It's not that much for fantasy. Like, Hayes is not doing much. I don't think many people got Hayes. Uh, Shawnee Russell, he's a better player in real life. He's not really a fantasy producer, but he can score a try. So, you know, power in this game may struggle against Souths, but next week they have the Cowboys without Origin players, which could be more enticing. Um, I'd wait a week and see. Sean Russell has a really good game here. He could be a guy you look at buying for a pretty good price there. Um, Dylan Brown, Mitch Moses is really interesting too. So if you're one of these guys, again, I don't expect him to pop off in this game. I'm not forecasting big scores. I own Dylan Brown. Um, I'm tempted by Mitch Moses as well. Mitch Moses could drop a bit more money in this game because he had that 29-point game before he got injured. Uh, Dylan Brown, he'll sort of stay around that same price as well for you. So if you're one of these guys, you can buy them, but just don't be forecasting a big score from them this week. In the forward pack, Gene Paul, I was pretty lucky to escape suspension. Um, we're in McGreek. I got a bit of crap for buying him three weeks ago. He's up 75K in that time. So I'm enjoying that. These guys going to play all three major buy rounds. It's too late to buy him now at 325k or whatever it is uh but when he was 250k you can take a gamble on guys at 250 same as when granville was 250. uh rest of the pack here look bracey cartwright comes back into the starting side um, andrew davy i'm not i'm not that interested andrew davy is a fantasy producer he's sort of in that high 400s there's just not that much upside there i mean he's probably going to be a bit of value but i'd rather reach and go for a, a jermaine hopgood for example but then even there, there's risk that he gets picked for origin. So I'm looking at my trades this week and thinking, I want to get Hopgood. He covers edge and middle. But if he gets picked for origin next week, you just look so silly. Like You feel so silly. You've made the wrong move because uh, a Parramatta player who plays origin is the worst possible option for that period. So I might wait wait a week on Hopgood. Um, on this bench, there's not too much to talk about here. I mean, a guy Ogden could score well through Origin, especially when Junior Polo's out. 269K, it's probably not worth the risk, but he's there, just worth noting. And Ryan Madison's coming off the bench. It's not really affecting his scoring negatively. I'm surprised he's not starting on the edge, but those things change on game day when it comes to Brad Arthur. So keep an eye on that. But last one here is if anything ever happened on Josh Hodgson and Brendan Hands, um, and Hands sort of got that starting role, that would be crazy for us because he's, he's nearly cash out price. And he's going to be, well, in that situation, he'd be the 80-minute hooker. So, decent. Next game here, Sharkies Knights. And they've had some good games in the past. I remember back in the day, 10 years ago, I used to captain Andrew Fafita every time he played the Knights because of that soft middle defense. Um, right now, the Knights are coming off a good win, but they're still a bit soft defensively. So, let's look at our Sharks players from that lens. Uh, right away, Nico Hines against the Knights. Right, pros, pros column here. He's got the Knights soft defense. He probably gets some attacking stats, might score a try. Big con though, you got Braden Trindle on the bench. Now, last week, Trindle came on and played a bit of lock and middle forward. And it's a weird thing to do for Cronulla. I, I can't imagine it's their long term plan that he plays that role. Uh, what would happen though is if it's a shark drop by 30 with 20 minutes to go, which is a realistic possibility, then. Hines might get a rest for Trindle. So that's the risk with Hines. He, you might end up getting a score where he gets some attacking stats but doesn't play the full game. Um, the rest of the team here, the outside backs are really exciting in this one. Look, guys like Jesse Ramian in particular, we talked about him last week as a, a buy of the future, maybe the next couple of weeks. He came out and posted a 51 last week. So he had a really good game. He looked really explosive. He just needs to get the ball and he scores well. Like He's that guy. Ramian, it's a bit too early. To make that move, but he's a guy I might be talking about in our all.com this week, potentially as a guy to look at this week if you're a head-to-head -head player. He's down in price quite a bit. You're getting some value there. 
The rest of the back line, I'm not really getting into too much. On the forward pack, I don't know. I mean, Cam McInnes is out for four weeks with a broken hand. So I'm looking at the rest of this team, and I think Dale Finucane eats up some of those minutes. You could make a case for some other guys. I don't know. McInnes is only really a 50-minute option. So, like, recently. So it's probably not going to do too much. I mean, Royce Hahn, Oregon Confuse, he might be mild value, but I'm not really that keen. Britton Nakora would have been a really exciting pod if you had him from the start. He's been absolutely killing it. And he's due another big score in this game. That's all I'm going to say. I think he'll he'll carve up the Knights' edges. So if you have him in draft or something like that, he might even be a captain option, but <laughs> not for classic. Um, on the night side of things, let's go and look at them because look, Lockie Miller is a big guy people are talking about selling. I think at his price, you're probably better off just holding on. Like he's Unless you've got a guy in your sights that you're really liking at wing fullback, don't just sell him for the sake of it. He plays the first major buy round. He's been scoring well for you. Had a couple of low weeks, but he's going to have to gel with that sort of situation where they've got Ponga doing a lot of the sweeping wider play as well. So it's going to be a bit tricky. Um, Dan Gagai is, I reckon he's a lock for origin, but um, there's been a bit of talk he might not make the team. So if he didn't make the team, he's the best center in the comp to own through the origin period uh, just on this year's form. Greg Mazu definitely won't make origin. Uh, he, he's a bit of a pod. He sort of come down in price after that initial spike. So you could have a look at him. If you wanted someone different, it could work out. It could blow up in your face, such as fantasy. I'm not keen on Hastings. He's been a real plotter. I don't know if I've got a draft leagues and it's not been great. But Kalen Ponger, 407K, something like that. Um, posted 56 points last week. And that was in a game where he was one of the best players on the field and had a lot of long-range efforts and attacking plays. So with Ponga, I mean, look, pros and cons again. Pro, 400K, very cheap for Kellen Ponga. Pro, when Dave Fafita scored that try, Ponga looked fast. Or, like, he caught him just before the try line. Fafita obviously got it down. But that sort of effort is something we haven't seen from Ponga recently. So maybe he's had that mental switch where he's, he's going at it hard. Con, injury risk, and con, state of origin risk. So he has one or two good games, and everyone just says, oh, yep, done. He's in the, he's in the Queensland team. He's in Moran. I think he's probably the favorite for that spot, the fullback spot. And if he gets that spot, then you do not want to have him in your team. So my thinking on Ponger is wait one week. If he scores really well against Cronulla, that would be surprising to me. Uh, but if he scores well against Cronulla, you cop a little bit of a dollar loss, but then you get to see State of Origin team list next week. Just wait, just be calm, um, see what happens there. In the forward pack, yeah, there's there's a few guys here that, are, that were interesting a while ago, I and mean, we, we were really high on a lot of Knights buys a while ago. They've all raised in value now, so it's not worth looking at too much. I'm probably not buying anyone in this pack. Adam Elliott's a guy who, if he's a free agent on your draft league, you might look at him. Phoenix Crossland bounced back if you held him. I think we did say to hold him. If you held him, you're rewarded with a good score this week. So nice work. Next up, the Tigers and the Cowboys. We got the 2005 Grand Final rematch, which, oh my God, I'm old if I'm thinking of it like that. <laughs> so Tigers first. And look, Tigers have been playing good footy recently. They had two wins in a row, and then they were down 6 0 against South with about 20 minutes to go. Went down 20 0, but it was late tries when they were really desperate. So I'm not going to hold it against them. Um, Dream Bullers, that guy you can just keep starting. You know, they were down, they lost 20 to nil and he still, still scored 36. That's good. That's something we're not getting from Tedesco, Trebojevic, or the other top wing fullbacks. So I'm really happy with that. I wouldn't be buying anyone in this, this back line, though. Like everyone else, I mean, Talau probably loses his spot to Naden. You know, we'll see what happens here, but uh, I'm not keen on any of that. And the Ford pack. They don't play the first major buy round, so I'm probably not buying any of these guys. I've seen a few people buy John Bateman. Um, shout out to BJ Head, who I've beaten head-to-head this week, who bought Johnny Bateman. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Isaiah Papali is probably more interesting to me in, in two weeks' time. Um, he's sort of bottoming, bottoming out in price right now, and he's going to be a guy that will be great to have through the later stages of the buy rounds. So keep an eye on Isaiah Papali. Just make a bit of a succession plan there for how you're going to get him in 
in round 14. I think that's really important. For the Cowboys, uh, Scotty Drinkwater is one that's been talked about a lot. He's had a few middling sort of games, mid-30s, mid-40s kind of thing. He could explode in this one. So if you have him, enjoy yourself. If you don't have him, he's probably not on my buy list this week, uh, but he could put out a big score here. He's, he's just not really a fantasy guy where he has to have a really good game of footy to score well in fantasy, whereas some other guys can just do it without you know, really contributing too much. Uh, rest of the back line, look, Val Holmes is a top-tier center option, but he plays Origin 100%, so you don't want that. Uh, Felt telling Hiku, no, 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 none of the rest of that back line. Forward pack, Reese Robson, he's got a lot of missed tackles the last two weeks. I think it was nine and then six missed tackles the last two weeks. So for Reese Robson, he might still be a buy for me. Um, the Tigers is a nice matchup for him. Not necessarily that they're going to just leave a bunch of points, but they're pretty solid sort of going through the middle. There'll be a lot of tackles in it for him. They don't throw too much at teams creativity-wise, so... I think this will be a bit set to set this game. And I think uh, Robson will get back to 50 plus tackles and maybe nab a try or a line break and potentially go back to a 70 point game this week. So keep an eye on that. Halem Lukey. Lukey, who's on the Lukey Express? I am on the Lukey Express. That's a humble brag right there. But look, Lukey, 84 points last week. He had two tries, just wide, nice lines where he sort of skipped outside of guys and was hard to tackle. Um, for Lukey, Plus 50K, but he's still at a nice price. So I think he's worth bringing in. His minutes increased from 54 to 60 minutes. They did say they were going to manage his minutes coming back. He only increases for mine. And I think Gajewski is the guy to slide out, especially when Nanai comes back. Because Lukey's, Lukey's that guy. The rest of the team, I mean, Tamalola is back next week. So keep an eye on that if you're thinking about any of these middle forwards. It just means a guy like Hess or McLean, you know, definitely is not a buy. Uh, Ruben Cotter, please Origin. Just, I wouldn't do it. They've rested him a lot this year. I think Granville's the big loser from Tamalola coming back, but he will score well in 13 because Cotter will be out for that game, so he should be all right. Press the bench, I'm not keen. Uh, Dolphins and the Storm, and we've got this game on Saturday night. Uh, this could be... A tough one for the Dolphins, I think. Uh, the Dolphins are, are killing it this year. But I think I just got the feeling that the Storm are going to come out and put on a bit of a statement game here, especially if they've got Nelson and Sofa Solomon playing the full game. They're looking much more like their full strength forward pack, which isn't as strong as recent years. But you got Nelson, a Sofa Solomon, a Christian Welch, Josh King, Tweaker Mika, Mika Mika. Uh, those guys are all really solid through the middle. And then Loyer on Katoa. It's just an explosive, strong forward pack with Harry Grant there too. So I think we might see some lower attacking stats scores from our Dolphins guys this week. So let's go through the Dolphins first. So if you've got Ham, so he was a sell a couple of weeks ago. I don't think he'll pop up in this game. Um, I still think he's probably a sell. I think I might bench him in my uh, Supercoach Draft League where I've got a few extra center wings uh, on the back line. Yeah, I mean, look, Valence Tavares is not there. <laughs> that's, that's sort of why I paused for a second. Um, there was word that he wasn't going to get back in and Brent Gurley was going to retake that spot. Look, there's obviously some concerns about Valence Tavares' uh, defense, but the guy's a freak. And, I mean, if you bought him, you know, if you bought him two weeks ago, you probably think you were a genius for a while and then this happened. If you bought him last week, shouldn't have bought him last week. <laughs> You need to wait for these team lists. Uh, if you're looking to buy him now, just don't do it. Like, just wait for another injury. Uh, there there was a bit of talk that you and Aitken might have a niggle. Um, but, yeah, look, Val Stavari, he's, he's in a tough spot. But if he gets a spot, again, you sort of know what their pecking order is now because he played great and he got this. Um, could Nick Rima, Isaiah Katoa, I probably wouldn't be... We wouldn't be selling either of these guys right now just because you've only got one week to origin performances. So they're going to play round 13, and that's that's serious value, but they're sort of pretty priced out at this point. Like you need a little more money here and there because they had some good games last time they played, but I don't back them to have a huge game here. I'd probably be using those guys as loophole options um, this week. In the forward pack, 
Not too much to talk about either in the forward back. I mean, Jerry Marshall King might be the premier hooker over the bye period with Damian Cook and Harry Grant out for origin. Uh, he's been better than Robson so far. So you could if you like Jerry Marshall King and you think he'll stay fit and you, you back the Dolphins to keep rolling, go for go for it. Have a crack. Do it. Um, Conley Lemuelu, he's been on form. He's, yeah, just pumping out huge scores the last three weeks. He's pretty expensive. Now I think it's 637K. If I, so I have him, but if I didn't have him, I might be leaning into not buying him at this point just because all the risk is priced in now. So everyone else bought him for 450K where he was upside. And if he averaged 35, it's like, okay, you can cop it. And we were copying it for a while and then he sort of exploded. Now it's 637K. You need him to be a premier edge back rower. That's that's what he's got to be for fantasy. So do you back him to do that? Does he go back to some lower form? Do the rotations change when Kenny Bromwich comes to the edge a bit? We, we don't know the answer to these questions. You know, Mark Nichols is 18th man. He could come back and need more minutes as well. Like, I wouldn't be rushing to buy Limo this week personally. Um, on the Storm side of things, there's not too much to talk about fantasy here. Uh, you don't want to be keeping probably a guy like Ken Munster through the origin period um, just because he gets those restings and he's had a few injuries in the past and that kind of thing. Harry Grant's a guy that I probably will keep through origin personally just because he's the top hooker by a country mile. You know, 62 average. He's about eight points better than anyone this year. So for me, there just hasn't been a captivating reason to trade Harry Grant. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hope he backs up. I'm going to cop a few losses in um, round 13, 16, 19. So for Solomona, give him a few weeks. He might be a right buy with the low score he had last week due to some injuries. Uh, Eli Katoa could be a buy in a couple of weeks as well. He's coming down in price again. Uh, I wouldn't go near Josh King right now or ever really just because Tui can make his back. Nelson's back. His minutes can't stay as high as they are, I don't think. So, yeah, just keep an eye on that. we got Dogs and the Titans. And it's uh, a Sunday game, so 2 p.m. We love the 2 p.m. footy. Uh, on the doggy side, there's a guy here that I might buy before they have their round 13 buy. And it's it's controversial because it's bad buy planning, but I really like Jacob Graz. So Joey Manu's out this week. Need to make a move at that wing fullback spot. Karaz is right for the picking. He's in the high 400s. I think he pops off this week. He had 200 meters last week. Didn't have the attacking stats. That's okay. This week he versus the Titans. They conceded a mozza of tries against the Knights. So, yeah, Karaz is probably that guy where I might do it this week and just cop the round 13 by because I think he's a keeper in disguise. You're getting him at such a discount. You know, you got 200K off basically from earlier in the season. So, yeah, everyone will be talking about Karaz later if you want to take a gamble. Feel free to give a look at this week. I might be doing it myself. Pull our Moddy. Don't be buying him, but if he held him, good job. He's one of us. He got 50. Thank God. Hopefully, he can pump the Titans again and yeah, post another good score for us. Um, out of cars back too, so that helps. Carl Oluapu. If you don't have him, go buy him. Uh, we've been saying buy him. He's been going up in price. He's he's up sort of 30, 40K across the season, just plotting out those 20 to 30 point games off the bench. He now gets to start. Josh Reynolds is on the bench. I hope they don't do some swap there, but I don't think they will. I think Josh Reynolds goes into the starting side. Um, so subs into the forward pack when he comes on. In the forwards, uh, Max King's been, been, been a bit capped recently just for those injuries. Tavita Pangai could be a guy we look at in a couple of weeks' time. He's getting cheap. He's gone back to back 40 point games without it big attacking stats. We know he's capable of. So. He's at a big discount around that 500k mark in a couple of weeks, we hope. Jacob Preston's one that I'm hovering over the trade button for. I'm not sure if I want to trade him or not. Um, I just need to think about that. Titans is a nice matchup, and his fixtures through origin period are, are quite good as well. But he misses this week, and he's kind of priced out in terms of what he's producing. So I'm not sure. I think he'll score well, though, this week. So I might end up holding on. Harrison Edwards is tricky. Um, I just some analysis on this. Uh, I looked at his numbers, and he's come in for three games and played big minutes in those three games and scored pretty well, pretty well, and then I think 36s-ish, and then about a 70-point game. I just some analysis, because when he comes in and starts, he plays big minutes, but then he disappears from the team. So 
Yeah, she needs a buy hold sell for that when um, if you want to sort of see some information on Harrison Edwards. Uh, on the bench, not super interested in any of this. Uh, on the Titan side of things, Jane Campbell hasn't even been scoring well recently, but obviously he's going to lose his spot to Princeton pretty soon. Uh, Cam Pereira just keeps on scoring tries. I held him in Dream Team, but traded him out in Fantasy, so I'm, I'm salty. But he's, no, he's killing it. But, uh, you know, you'd be wanting to sell him pretty soon if you have him. Uh, I would be buying into the rest of the back line here. Uh, Tanner Boyd, you might look at selling him soon. He's sort of priced on up to where he's going to get. Um, you've done a great job if you sell him. He looked a bit dead in the water for a while there, and then he's bounced back. And if you are one of those coaches who was patient enough to hold him, congratulations to you. Um, yeah, good job there. On the forward pack side of the day, he looks far. Uh, I mean, I think Ford Awaken makes Origin. I know Tino makes Origin. I think Dave Fafita makes Origin. This is a pack that is going to see some Origin appearances, and we're going to get to see all those things before you'd want to be buying Titans players anyway. Um, Dave Fafita keeps on pumping out big scores, but unless you're a head to head player, we're not buying Origin players right now. Um, and he's kind of priced at his max right now as well. So you're buying all the risk there. The rest of the team, yeah, not keen on the the bench here. And then Sunday game, 4 p.m., Raiders and the Seagulls. And this should be a pretty entertaining game. I'm hoping it's another one of those sort of 30-plus each games that the Raiders have been having recently. Uh, Manly is definitely capable of that. So we could have a game that, you know, goes to Golden Point, a bit of fun. That would be a nice way to finish the weekend. For the Raiders... We talked about Matt Tomoko a lot of times. He was a really good buy a couple of weeks ago. He's a bit pricey at the moment, but still a good buy if you like him. Not really keen on the rest of the back line. Jack White is a little bit of a pod, but I don't see him producing enough. Same as Jamal Fogarty in the forward pack. I think right now, if you're buying one this week, I'd probably go, and I said this last week as well, I'd go Tarpanay over Horsburgh still. Um, Tarpanay produced 60 points, Horsburgh 48. Horsburgh was Sinbin, though. So th let, let's say they were about even in that game. I just think the risk around Horsburgh being big for Origin next week is it's it's not a certainty at all. It's maybe a 20% chance. But you just don't want to take that risk. And look, Tarpanay is all upside. Like, at worst, he's going to score 45 for you in 45 minutes. But at best, he goes up to that 70 sort of average. So I'm moving on Tarpanay. Hudson Young is an origin risk. Don't buy him now. And the better he plays for you in fantasy, the more likely he is to be if he's an origin. So it's a bit of a losing game. Josh probably, he probably plays origin as well. If you had, I mean, I had Solo earlier in the year. If you still have him on your bench somehow, <laughs> probably just hold him now. Uh, but, you know, not many people do. On the manly side of things, Tommy Turbo has been a wreck for fantasy. An absolute wreck. <sighs> I mean, he might not get big for origin. So... You might get him in the first major buy round, but he's not playing well and he's losing money. Uh, yeah, he was a sell a month ago, but he's maybe an intriguing hold now if you have him just for that. Uh, I don't know, maybe he has a chip on his shoulder if he doesn't get picked. i got no idea. Look, Ruben Garrick is the one that's more interesting. We were, we were sprouting off about Garrick last week. Garrick posted a big game, 55 points. I put him in Dream Team, not in Fantasy, but... Still pretty happy. He, he's pumping it. Um, he's a guy that if Turbo doesn't get picked, Garrick scores tries. And if Turbo does get picked, Garrick probably plays some fullback or has a bigger role in the team in general. So you're not fussed either way. I think Garrick at 500K is, is pretty nice. I'm going Karaz potentially over Garrick. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I might go Garrick over Karaz actually. Just for that first major buy run, go Karaz in a couple of weeks' time instead. The Raiders isn't tough matchup for Garrick either. Yeah, Schuster back too. I might just talk myself into that live. Uh, all right, it might be Garrick. Forward pack here. He'll be talking about Prosecco. I think there are more exciting options. The interesting thing here is on the Trebojevic front, so Jake Trebojevic comes back into the team. That doesn't change too much because LIA is out with a shoulder injury, so the minutes probably balance out for the meantime, and then you know Jake will build up. But for Ben Trebojevic... What do we think there? So Tua Lungi's out. He's got a facial fracture. Um, that could be a while. I don't have an exact time frame on that, but fracture usually means at least a couple of major buy rounds for Ben Trojevic. Does Ben play big minutes on that edge? 
they haven't really shown faith in him in the past to do that. The challenge there too is that Carl Lawton has played on the edge before. Ethan Bullimore was a starting edge back row for Manly last year. And Ben Condon can also play that role. So I'm going to wait a week on Ben Trevojevic just to see how these minutes pan out because I think there's a serious chance. I mean, there's a big chance that he's a producer and he goes 35 average, 40 average, potentially. Probably not 40, probably 35. But there's a big chance he's a 35 average. There's also a very big chance that he starts and plays the first 40 minutes on average and then doesn't come back on unless there's an injury in the centres. So I'm probably steering clear of Ben, but I need to do some more analysis on this too. Anyway, that's our team list. We're going to be posting buy, hold, sell. We've got a bunch of tipping videos as well on the channel. Make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you go follow us on Instagram and TikTok too. Um, Bergs has a bunch on the Instagram and I'm all over the TikTok. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the next video.